Uh, good afternoon. I'm Alex Kuchatrian, and I'm privileged to be here today uh, with our team of co-presenters that will be showing you uh, our program. Uh, uh, it's a last presentation today and the last presentation at the conference, uh, so I wanted to make it a little more entertaining, a little more fun for you. So uh, the presentation will consist of three parts. First, we'll do a little demo of our system, and one of the students, uh, actually the former student of our program, will demonstrate uh, it to you. After that, we'll talk more about what this program is about, what kind of results we're showing. At the very end, we'll do a, a math problem competition uh, where two students will be competing with each other. So please stay with us until very, very end. Uh, we know that we're running a little late on schedule, uh, but, uh, but we really want to make it uh, very, very interesting and engaging for you. So for the first part of our presentation, I'm privileged to introduce our former student, uh, Rhea Goodman, uh, uh, who will be uh, talking about her experiences uh, uh, with the Reasoning Mind program. Uh, can we get a box over here so Rhea could stand? Okay, Rhea, here you go. And you can navigate this mic. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rhea Goodman. I am 12 years old and I attend the Kincaid School. I am a former student of the Reasoning Mind program, and I, and I am here to talk to you today about what a great program it is and how it helped me. I was first introduced to the King, uh, I was first introduced to RM, as we call it for short, in the third grade when I attended Cornelius Elementary. I loved the program from the start. Now, let's take a look at RM. One of the first features of RM is guided study. Guided study is kind of like your math textbook. First, you can sometimes start off with games, which are still very educational, but very fun and appealing to all ages. Or you can start with warm-up problems, and those help you get prepared for the day and what you're going to learn. One of the newest features is the wall of mastery. The Wall of Mastery is kind of like a review. It helps you in all your areas that you have covered, and uh, it consists of A, B, and C problems. A being the easiest and C being the hardest. Now, when you go into one of the problems, it can, once you master an A problem, A problems, you will go to B and B to C. Now, as you see, there are word problems, and word problems are the hardest for children to understand nowadays. Now, as you see, this may be a level A problem, but you still have to read and understand the problem. And I can very easily see, and even though I'm doing mental math, most children will still have pencil and paper in their computer labs. As you can see, this problem would mean 16 plus 6, which equals... 22, and once you solve the problem, the genie will tell you if it's correct. And then another feature is the genie solution, which tells you how to solve the problem, even if you got it correct or incorrect. So the wall of mastery is a review and helps you very much to understand the concepts you have just covered. Now, in guided study, when you solve problems, you get points for them, and they are displayed down here in the left-hand corner. And these points go to this section of RM. My progress is a progress report for you. It shows you how many points you have earned, how many problems you have done today, and the accuracy that you have correct, and in the last two weeks. It also shows you how much of the curriculum you have completed. And it shows you where you are and where you are expected to be. So if you fall behind, you can always push yourself. Now, points help you when you go into the shopping mall. The shopping mall consists of the Great Hall Prizes store, which gives you little fun items to put in a new place called My Place, which is kind of like your house on RM City. And you also have the bookstore, which consists of many books that you can buy and read for yourself. So as you can see, RM is a very well-rounded program. Now, it helped me not only in the classroom, but even when I was still in elementary, 
I am now making straight A's in math and am available to my other classmates to help them. So RM has helped me gain more confidence and has helped me get better and better at math because I was not always the best, best math student. Thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you very much, Rhea. Okay, so now to the presentation. So there are two major reasons why we're presenting this program to you. Uh, the first one is uh, that students like Rhea are not an exception, but rather a norm at Reasoning Mind. We served thousands of students, and we've heard from so many of them, literally thousands, as well as teachers and principals, that students do take to mathematics and become very, very successful in it. And we believe that that would deserve some of your attention. The second reason why we are speaking today uh, is that uh, the success of this project is to a large extent due to all the help that we've got from TAMIST and many of TAMIST members. And I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, those TAMIST members and the entire organization for helping grow this program from ground up. In particular, I would like to thank our founding chairman, Ernie Cockrell, who uh, headed our organization from the very beginning, uh, Steve Holditch, uh, Bill Brinkley, as well as Richard Tapia helped tremendously and continue to help our project, as well as Larry Faulkner, Neil Lane, and Malcolm Gillis, uh, who are all affiliated or Tamist members, and we want really to thank all of them for tremendous help with getting this project going uh, and, uh, and so successful. So thank you very much. Thank you all. So I want to start uh, with a, a brief uh, overview of the problem, which I believe is quite well known to everyone. Uh, so the problem with STEM education and mathematics in education in particular is well documented. Uh, I'm sure all of you have heard about Rising Above the Gathering Storm report, which was released in 05, uh, which uh, uh, quite, quite uh, forcefully uh, uh, stated that we have a major problem that needs to be resolved. Uh, in response to this report, uh, a few years later, uh, Tamist issued its own report, uh, The Next Frontier, uh, where they outlined, the, the, the Academy outlined uh, an approach to fixing uh, uh, educational and STEM educational efforts uh, in Texas. Reasoning Mind was very fortunate to be highlighted by this report and being endorsed in this report among only 10 uh, uh, educational products that, uh, and projects that received A+, and we were the only mathematics education program uh, on that list. Uh, unfortunately, a couple of years later, uh, there was a follow-up study, so it was fortunate that there was a follow-up study, but unfortunately, a follow-up study to the original Rising Above the Gathering Storm report, which is called uh, Rising Above the Gathering Storm Revisited, stated that we have not made much progress over the years that passed uh, since uh, the initial report was, uh, was published in 2005. And actually, the authors of the report concluded that our nation's outlook has worsened and the gathering storm increasingly appears to be a category of five. It's a monumental problem to solve. Uh, it's not for the lack of effort, but it's really hard to solve. And all that we really learned from this experience is that we just need to try harder and probably focus more of our resources in, on fixing this problem. As an epigraph, uh, epigraph uh, to, to this study, the authors selected uh, the words of Sir Ernest Rutherford, gentlemen, we have run out of money, it's time to start thinking. It's, that's how difficult the problem is. You cannot solve it with money. You really have to do some thinking about it. And that's exactly what Reasoning Mind have been doing uh, since its inception. We looked at the problem and we identified three major pieces to this puzzle that we believe, according to all research available to us, need to be addressed uh, to resolve the math education problem in our country. And those pieces are curriculum, which has to be focused and world class, human capital, uh, which is teachers that should be very well trained uh, to do mathematics education, and students need to be engaged. 
And unfortunately, none of those pieces been in place uh, at the time when we started, and in many, many schools uh, right now, they're still not in place. Curriculum desires to be better. Teachers, as you could see on the screen, uh, lack uh, knowledge and training required to deliver quality mathematics curriculum and uh, student experiences, as well as students are not really engaged. So in the solution that we offered, all those three pieces are addressed uh, uh, with very, very powerful solutions. First of all, we put in the foundation of our system a very powerful world-class curriculum that's built on the tradition of excellence in many countries uh, other than the United States and proven to be successful with generations and literally hundreds of millions of students. Uh, we also addressed the issue of human capital and developed a very powerful teacher preparation program uh, that uh, indicates that the great majority of teachers that go through this program uh, benefit tremendously from it and become much more effective uh, in their uh, mathematical teaching. And finally, we figured out how to make this program really engaging and attractive uh, for students. Uh, and the time on task uh, increased dramatically. Students now take on to mathematics, they enjoy learning, and they uh, discover that mathematics can be very, very fun and very, very rewarding experience to them. So how did we do this? We used technology as an engine for this change. Well, there are a few things about technology that, uh, that are so powerful. The first one is that you can deliver a uniform, extremely high quality curriculum to all students, regardless of the physical location, regardless of the school where they're at. The second thing about computers and technology is that you can really make it engaging to students. Students love computers. And computers can provide this kind of an engaging, animated, and very, very targeted to the needs of every student experience that is really hard to not have, as a result of it, a very, very engaging experience for students. We focused on uh, elementary grades first because we strongly believe, and all research points in that direction, uh, that unless students get the fundamentals of mathematics in early in elementary grades, it's very difficult uh, to fix those accumulating problems later on. The reasoning mind approach is made up uh, of the following three major components. Uh, it's certainly a student who is at the center of our system, teacher with all teacher experiences and tools available to them, and our computer-based system. So let's start with a student. So what students do in the reasoning mind system, they sit in their classroom in front of the computer and there is one-to-one -one student to computer ratio. Uh, and the students are guided by the computer along their unique individualized learning trajectories. And as I already mentioned, the computers are engaging through graphics, instant response, uh, and a custom tailored path of instruction engage every student instantaneously. The teachers in this environment are freed up uh, from dispensing instruction to all students at the same time uh, and teaching to the mean of a class. Instead, they focus on helping individually those students that need help at most. So face-to-face -face time with students increased dramatically. Teachers also rely on the huge volume of data that our system provides to them because we register every keystroke every student ever, uh, ever pushes in the system and process this data to make it available to teachers so they could know uh, which students are struggling, which students need what kind of a help and where this help is needed. Uh, the Reasoning Mind system itself as a software system is powered by very, uh, very sophisticated artificial intelligence that actually is simulating a, a tutor uh, that knows the best pedagogies and teaching methods uh, and relates directly and communicates directly with every student in guiding this student through their unique path and trajectory of learning. Also, the system, as I mentioned, remembers every keystroke and continuously analyzes the entire history of every student's learning in the system so that the future path of learning could be customized and adjusted based on the responses received from every student. We are currently serving uh, over 42,000 students in more than 350 schools. The program is spreading very, very quickly. Uh, most of our students are in Texas, but we've seen a lot of interest outside of state. We are currently in seven states, and that's where the program uh, is being implemented as well. Our teacher professional development component, uh, which uh, is underwritten by uh, the ExxonMobil Foundation, uh, is uh, very popular and very powerful. Uh, we spend about 150 instructors hours with our teachers in their first year of introduction to reasoning mind. Uh, and this time, well invested uh, in their professional development, pays off uh, 
very significantly. As you could see, 96% of teachers that went through a teacher professional development program were either satisfied or extremely satisfied uh, with the help that they received uh, from our program. These are a couple of quotes from our teachers. Again, these are not pre-selected by any means. Uh, we receive letters uh, with thanks from our teachers on a daily basis. Uh, uh, actually, these numbers, 96%, are very, very accurate. All of those teachers benefit tremendously from the program. Students are truly engaged. If you look at this picture, you could see that they really immersed uh, in their learning, each and every of them. So there's no time wasted. Uh, they really use all of the instructional time in the classroom productive. And they're having fun. They really enjoy learning, which is, as we know, at least half of a battle. Because when students enjoy learning, uh, well, they definitely can learn, uh, and it makes the entire instructional process and learning process much smoother and much easier for them. Now, on to the results. Uh, we've done many, many studies, both in-house and independent studies, of the effectiveness of Reasoning Mind program, comparing uh, Reasoning Mind students with students in control groups. What you see here on this particular slide are two uh, schools in the Houston Independent School District, uh, where you could see that Reasoning Mind students uh, selected at random, uh, with random assignment from uh, the uh, overall initial pool of students, outperformed students in the control groups, uh, both on text passing rates, as well as on commanded performance rates, which I believe is one of the most important, if not the most important indicator. Because commanded performance is where the students can solve over 90% of problems on the test correctly. That's the level where really true mastery of the subject at a certain grade level uh, is, is measured. And you could see that with commanded performance, reasoning mind students outperform three times non-reasoning mind students in that particular case, and close to two times uh, it, at, at meeting elementary school. Similar results we could see at one of the Dallas schools, J. Eric Johnson, which studied reasoning mind in 2008. Before that, their commanded rate was quite low. It was only 14%. Only 14% of their students showed true mastery at fifth grade level of mathematics. In the first year of implementing reasoning mind, the commanded performance rate jumped to 47% and continued to grow every year. And that's given that all students uh, in, this, in this school uh, represent uh, an economically disadvantaged community with 82% of students economically disadvantaged and close to 100% of students were minority students. Similar picture we see in Houston Independent School District where just one year of intervention with reasoning mind uh, from fourth grade to the fifth grade cut the gap, achievement gap, between African American students and white students by one third from negative 19% to negative 12%. And that was, again, I underline this, just one year of intervention. Think about what kind of effects this program can produce if students will be exposed to it over a number of consecutive years. Another study in Houston uh, Independent School District completed independently uh, by the Research Department of Houston Independent School District uh, uh, just last year indicates that with reasoning mind students, their tax passing rate uh, increase, while without the reasoning mind program uh, uh, use of our program, the passing rate uh, from one grade to another dropped uh, by 11%. And this is a pretty sizable uh, uh, sample size of students you could see here at the bottom. So we're talking about uh, uh, 1,300 students in the experimental group and 2,400 students in the control group. Very recent report that was released uh, just a couple of weeks ago uh, was performed independently. Uh, the evaluation was performed independently by doctors uh, Houston and Waxman from University of Houston and Texas A&M. And this report indicated the exact same thing. On a different sample of students uh, in Beaumont Independent School District, and it showed that uh, the difference are statistically significant and educationally meaningful, uh, and uh, uh, the results were also uh, confirmed to be, uh, to be effective even when controlling uh, for students' socioeconomic status, gender, and all ethnic background students benefited from reasoning mind at a very, very same rate. This is the result that I take a special pride in. Uh, in the end, what really is matters whether students will be ready for higher level mathematics. And it's well known and documented by research that if students are successful, it's successful in taking Algebra 1 course, that's a gatekeeper. Most likely, uh, they will be able to graduate from high school and go on to college. And in a small study in Angleton Independent School District, we've been able to track students that took reasoning mind 
over two consecutive years at fifth and sixth grade level. And after that, we tracked them what would happen with those students once they get to algebra. And they were back to traditional instruction, certainly after that. Uh, so uh, we looked at the rate of failing algebra one between reasoning mind students and non-reasoning mind students at Tangleton ISD, and we discovered that those students that went for two years uh, through our program, uh, they're 44% uh, less likely uh, to, uh, to fail uh, algebra one than non-reasoning mind students. So reducing almost by half algebra failure rate seems to be a very, very strong endorsement of the results and effectiveness of our program. Another interesting feature and very powerful feature of our approach is the scalability. We demonstrated that we can scale to a large number of students very, very easily. In particular, since 08 to uh, 2010, we grew from just 1,900 students to 19,000 students. A tenfold increase in just two years, which is about kind of three times every year. And we demonstrated that we can sustain this kind of a growth and benefit with this program uh, a whole lot more students because it is so scalable and it is scalable, scalable because of the use of technology that is the backbone of everything that we do at Reasoning Mind. On top of that, it shows a very powerful and unparalleled economies of scale. Right now, the cost of delivering the program to a single child on average is about $180. But as the number of users of the program grow, the cost drops precipitously. So at scale, which we plan to reach in about a couple of years from now, on average, with teacher professional development and student tuition fees that we charge schools, uh, the cost of the program per student will drop down to $50, which is uh, only about 30 cents uh, per student per day. Uh, the state of Texas recognized the value of our program and supported us tremendously uh, on both sides of the aisle, uh, as well as on the executive branch. branch we uh, enjoyed endorsements and strong support from the side of the governor and lieutenant governor, which translated in funding uh, from Texas Education Agency, uh, which benefited uh, these 14,000 students. But many school districts use their own funds and champion the use of the program within their uh, constituencies. And uh, I have listed here uh, some of those school districts, Dallas, Abilene, in Beaumont, Harlandale, City Hill, uh, that found funding in their own funds to bring this powerful program to their children and show tremendous success with this. And especially I would like to highlight and spotlight the Dallas Independent School District that made a strategic decision to deploy Reasoning Mind program for all of their great students. So beginning this year, all of their 14,000 second graders are on the Reasoning Mind system, and they already made a commitment to expand this to all of their third and fourth graders next year. So here you see the total number of students that are currently benefiting from our program. In the end, I would like to thank many, many donors and uh, funders that supported our project. It's a nonprofit initiative, and it would have never been possible uh, unless we enjoyed a tremendous support in the community. Uh, I cannot possibly list all of our donors. There are more than 130 of them. They're all listed on our website, but I wanted to recognize those that made uh, a major uh, and enormous contribution, and many of them uh, are, are here in this, in this room today. So thank you all very, very much. And I also want to conclude going back to this uh, uh, epigraph uh, from Sir Ernest Rutherford uh, 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 calling for, for certain thinking that needs to be done. We believe that we've done this thinking. Uh, we think that we have an effective, proven to work, low cost and scalable solution that can benefit not just 40,000 students across the state, but a whole lot more students. We can reach out to 1.5 million students in grades second through sixth right now and change forever uh, the level of mathematics education in our state. And the consequences, as uh, I'm sure you understand, will be absolutely enormous in all aspects of their lives and the well-being of our state. So let's do it. I'm calling uh, for your help uh, with getting the word out and letting those school districts and schools where we have contacts to really take a very, very close look at what Reasoning Mind is offering and hope that we can grow this program further for the benefit of all Texans. So thank you so much. Uh, and that concludes this part of the presentation. Uh, and I now want to kind of pass control to our Vice President of Strategic Initiatives, uh, Stephen Gaudino, who will guide the demonstration of the mathematics problem-solving competition 
couple of students uh, that uh, were courageous enough uh, to, to come forward and, and to uh, compete today. Stephen? Thank you. The initial thought was that we'll have one of the Reasoning Mind students uh, compete with one of the tamest members. Uh, wouldn't that be cool? Uh, well, guess what? There were no takers. <laughs> now we're talking about how intimidating mathematics can sometimes get. But well, we have two courageous students here uh, that are ready to present. And Stephen, you are. All right, thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in store for you today, we have a momentous mathematical event, a battle of the minds unlike any other, the Math Race Championship of the Universe. Math Race is a basic skills game that students can use to improve their computational fluency. And to your left, we have a fifth grade student from Cornelius Elementary, uh, his favorite subject, mathematics, his age, 10. Legend has it that he can divide by zero, but does not out of respect for tradition. <laughs> Let's hear a round of applause for Darius Goodman. <laughs> to your right, we have a fourth grade student from Houston Heights Learning Academy. Her favorite subject, also mathematics. Her age, also 10. I am told that in the margins of her notebook, she doodles hearts around Fermat's last theorem. Please put your hands together for Brentasia Fontenot. We wish you both the best of luck. Please start your engines. Uh, Brentasia, you can start your car. Um, and Darius, as you'll see in a moment, has selected the elephant, so he can start his elephant. The wonders of the internet. And here we go. The game will begin in six, Five, four, three, two, one, and they're off. Each player moves by answering the questions you can see on the screen. A correct answer boosts the player forward. An incorrect response draws the player back. Let's see how they're doing. Oh, they're right neck and neck. It looks like Darius is off to a little bit of an early lead, but only about an eighth of an elephant ahead. There's still time for either to cross the finish line first. One thing that we know for sure is that the winner will be the one with the strongest showing in mental math ability. There is a strict gentleman's code to preserve the cognitive function of the game, so both players have been warned in advance that counting on their fingers will lead to an immediate removal of all fingers. <laughs> now let's check back to see how they're doing. Ooh, it looks like Brentasia is moving a little bit farther ahead. See if you can keep up with the contestants as they solve the problems on the screen. 11 minus 6 plus 2. Oh, very good, very good. We're getting a little bit closer to the end now. Will Darius be able to catch up? Here we go. Let's hear some support for our players. <laughs> Final stretch almost all the way to the right. Oh, and a strong finish indeed. Brentasia came out ahead. Thank you for your round of applause for a hard-fought match. And thank you to both of our contestants. I will turn now the microphone back over to Christine for some closing words. Thank you.